Hello and welcome to today's video. I'm Sarah and today we're going to dive into deuterium because it's something that's really important for growth in the right tissue at the right time, mitochondrial function, disease, healthy metabolism, aging, cancer and more. Also deuterium has been mentioned in some of my other podcast especially in interviews with dr cruz and it will be mentioned again with dr stephanie seneff who's up next and she did a big dive into deuterium and didn't introduce what it was because she didn't want to be dumbed down so that's a really good podcast to look out for i'm also going to explain to you about practical daily life applications of deuterium because it is important to know the theory so you don't just believe anything that people tell you but it's also important to know well how can i apply this to my daily life if i wanted to so just to start off fairly simple, deuterium is like a big hydrogen. So the difference between it and hydrogen is the fact that deuterium has got a neutron as well and it's bigger. So it's got more mass. And the fact that it's bigger is really important for biochemical processes because it ties into Einstein's equation E equals MC squared, where E is energy, M is mass and C is the speed of light. And light was so important, it was there twice. So it is an important factor in biology and quantum biology. The other thing about the deuterium being bigger than hydrogen is that it's more challenging for it to do things like quantum tunneling and also certain biochemical reactions in the cell, and it provides half the energy. Plants and their chloroplasts will put up with deuterium, but water high in deuterium does tend to affect the yield of crops as much as sort of 40 percent sometimes. Whereas deuterium is a disaster in the mitochondria and the mitochondria go through great lengths to keep deuterium out. So basically mitochondria, for those who don't know, are organelles that are essential for releasing energy through cellular respiration. And they basically convert carbohydrates, fats, proteins into something called acetyl-CoA. And through a variety of processes, this turns into ATP as in energy and water and carbon dioxide and infrared light. Inside the mitochondria, there's a process called the Krebs cycle. And in a nutshell, to keep this simple, what happens here is electrons and protons are stripped off so that they can be fed into the electron transport chain to make ATP and water. And there are lots and lots of steps in the Krebs cycle to basically check and make sure a deuterium doesn't get in uh, to the matrix by accident. So basically, this Krebs cycle is set up to keep the big hydrogens out. So what happens in the mitochondrial matrix is the mitochondria concentrate hydrogens to make a gradient. So it's a bit like water in a hydroelectric plant. It can be pumped up somewhere. So it's going to uh, later on cascade down to create energy. Basically, so these protons or these small hydrogens or correct size hydrogens are vital for operating the ATPase, which is a nanobiological motor that spins and it makes ATP. The ATPase is really interesting and it's actually the smallest rotary magnetic motor in nature and it operates at high efficiencies. And what happens is the protons that all got pumped up or pushed up into the matrix are all going to in the outer mitochondrial membrane are going to all flow down like imagine water in a hydroelectric plant flowing down to drive a turbine. So these hydrogens all are meant to flow down the middle of the ATPase as it's spinning. So if we think about a deuterium, which is bigger and it's double the size, it's basically too big to fit into the ATPase channel. So it's sort of like an adult trying to slide down a kid's slide and getting stuck or breaking the slide. So what happens with these deuterium is they severely disrupt uh, energy production. This disruption in energy production has a really big impact on longevity, cellular health and cancer. So what happens is the mitochondria themselves, they produce deuterium depleted water or water that's low in heavy hydrogens. And then this water gets structured into EZ water or the fourth phase of water by the infrared light made by the mitochondria themselves, as well as things like sunlight or external red light, for example, a red light panel. And this structured water or AZ water coats all of the biological surfaces in the body. So it reduces friction or inflammation. And the EZ water also acts as a second battery. Um, it allows other molecules to act like semiconductors. And it's also part of the communication system in the body. So the, these deuterium can also influence the hydrogen bonds in, in, um, in the structured water as well and cause 
a different effect, but also, as I said before, because they're twice the size, they only provide half the energy. And when it comes down to energy in the body, the more we've got, the better. And it's not all about the ATP either. This is the sort of work of Gilbert Ling. He proved that it wasn't just about the high energy phosphate bonds. There's a, there was another structure in water, as in the second battery that Gerald Pollock talked about in his podcast. So these deuterium, these big hydrogens, have to be compartmentalized in the body. They're not allowed in certain places. Uh, and this, again, is going to be what part two is about. So deuterium isn't anything evil or bad. It just has its place in biology and its place is not inside the ATPase in the mitochondria. And also because deuterium is bigger than hydrogen, it does influence water's property. So this would impact charge, viscosity and hydrogen bonding. So this again is going to affect the water network in the body. So I'm not talking about water in the blood. The deuterium is allowed to be in the blood. It's got a specific role there. So now what's really important is that's all very interesting, but people always want to know, well, how is this applicable to daily life? So as I said, deuterium itself isn't nasty. It's just when there's too much of it or there's too much of it and it's in the wrong place. So basically we remove or deplete deuterium by sweating, pooing, weeing, and also sunlight will deplete deuterium as well. And we obviously remove or get rid of more deuterium in the summer than we do in the winter. Now, fruits and grains contain a lot of deuterium, especially fruit, because it's uh, wet. So eating lots of fruits and grains is going to raise your deuterium levels, especially if you eat lots of fruit and grains in the winter. And this is why eating fruit out of season is a very bad idea, because we're just not equipped to deal with it evolutionarily in the winter. Uh, but eating fruit in season, and if it's sunny where you are that's even better because sunlight as i just said is going to help deplete deuterium and that's when we would naturally be eating fruit but even if somebody lives somewhere equatorial there's still a rainy season and a dry season so there isn't fruit at the equator all the time either and we can't just vilify plants all the time anyway because junk food is really high in deuterium as well so we, that's one way people get um, too much deuterium in is by eating it or not depleting it. Now, fats are low in deuterium and so are protein. So things like carnivore or keto ways of eating are naturally going to be low in deuterium. Another way which has got nothing to do with food is that when people are inflamed by the COX-1 pathway, this affects how well the mitochondria screen for deuterium. So when people are inflamed, more, more deuterium gets into the mitochondria by accident, into the wrong place and can break the ATPase. And also just not sweating enough or not going out in the sun enough, if you've got the opportunity, that's going to limit how much deuterium you, you actually get rid of. So deuterium depleted water isn't a fad, it's, it's expensive, but it does have lots and lots of value. And I definitely drink it sometimes. And I have definitely recommended it to people who've got multiple health issues or cancer. And normally with deuterium depleted water, the one that I buy is either 25 parts per million or 18 parts per million. And then I dilute it up to about 100 parts per million so that I can do a deuterium depletion, as in wash out some of the heavy hydrogens from myself. So, so drinking it neat can be too stressful. You don't need to do that. And it's a massive waste of money as well. So you can lower deuterium in yourself that way. But as I said, that you can use methods that are free too. And again, if you don't put lots of deuterium into yourself to start with, and there's less of a problem to have to deal with. I hope you found this useful. And like I said, I'm going to make another video about deuterium or maybe another two or three to go into more depth each time, as well as making other videos on some of the biophysical side of quantum biology, but also to make it practical because I think theory is really important. This is important for debates and being scientifically accurate, but a lot of people just want to know, well, how do I apply it to my daily life? So we need to know both really. So Keep um, a lookout for the next couple of videos and thanks for watching.